guys welcome back in the last video we were discussing about loops in C we saw the functions of for loop while loop and do while loop and I also asked you guys to perform a few home tasks like printing the multiplication table doing the factorial and the Fibonacci series program I hope you did that successfully if not then try a little more you surely succeed now in this video we will discuss about jump statements in C. So C basically supports three types of jump statements. The keywords are already on the screen that is break, continue and go to. We don't use go to much but uh, break and continue are quite handy. Okay. So what the break keyword does is C. Whenever you have a loop and you don't want the loop to continue you know till the end point comes basically what I mean to say is that suppose you have loop running and uh, say you want to terminate before the end point so in that case what you will do is you can use the break keyword okay so <coughs> the break keyword acts like a trigger which can take you out of the loop so let us see what's written over here. The break statement terminates the loop for while and do while immediately when it is encountered. The break statement is also used with decision making statement. Yeah, in case of switch, which I have not shown you, but when we use switch case statement, in that case is also we use the break keyword. Probably I will show you one example in this in this video itself that how can we use break statement when we use switch. So this break is a very handy keyword to use. <clears throat> Next we have the continue keyword. The continue statement skips some statements inside the loop. The continue statement is used with decision making statements such as if else. Uh, what actually happens is whenever a continue keyword is encountered, the code immediately after the continue statement inside a particular block is completely ignored. That means the part of code which is written inside a block after a continue keyword will not be executed. Instead, the jump will directly shift to, uh, uh, to the beginning of the loop. Okay, uh, we shall see the functionality of every keyword separately in a program and then the things will get very clear for you. The next one is the go to label. This go to label, although it is actually a unconditional jump, that means you can specify a go to along with a label and later on in the program, I mean anywhere in the program, whenever that particular label is encountered, your, pro your uh, control of the program will shift directly to that point. But the use of go to label is highly discouraged by good programmers. Why it is so is that go to label keeps no direction or there is basically no flow remaining. I mean, uh, once you use a go to label, the flow of the program is completely disturbed. That means where will the program jump from which point that becomes very unclear. So whenever the reader tries to read your code, he, he or she can get highly confused about what exactly is your code doing. So that is why we don't use go to keyword at all. Instead, whatever is done by the go to label, we can achieve by we can achieve that somehow by some other means. Okay. So even it is advisable by me to you that try not to use go to. Okay. Do not use this go to keyword. And lastly, there is the exit function. The name itself suggests that whenever the exit function is encountered, your program gets terminated. Okay. Uh, this exit is actually included in the header file called stdlib.h so we'll sh see that as well now this is the flowchart for a break statement see over here try to understand the flowchart very properly what happens is the control of the program enters the loop there is the test expression of the loop obviously if the text if the test expression turns out to be false then the program will automatically exit from the loop otherwise if the text if the test expression is true then it will see whether there is any break if any break in 
uh, or rather if any break statement is encountered then immediately the loop will be exited otherwise the remaining body of the loop is continued to uh, execute and then the control again shifts to the text test expression again if the test expression turns out to be true there is a check for a break statement if it is encountered then exit otherwise continue to execute the remaining body so this is the flowchart of break statement now this diagram shows the flowchart for a go to statement see over here what happens is there is the statement 1 say suppose the program is execution executing then somehow somewhere a statement 1 is encountered from this statement there is a label okay see there is a branch from here which says go to label 3 so say suppose the statement 1 is some label which takes you over here now this says go to label 3 so your control immediately shifts to statement 3 which is cor which corresponds to label 3 okay so over here what is the anomaly is that see over here we have a very small piece of a flowchart but for a large program large program in the sense maybe thousands or two thousands of lines for such a large program when you have frequent use of your go to labels then what will happen is your program will jump indefinitely from one place to another place and from third to the other place so that makes the readability of the program very poor so that is why we do not use go to label at all and lastly we have this continue statement this is a uh, this looks pretty much similar to the break but actually it is not see first of all the loop is entered once the loop is entered obviously the text test expression is tested just like break if the test expression turns out to be false then the loop will automatically be exited but if the test expression is true okay that means the endpoint has not been reached then if there is a continue statement then the remaining body of the loop will not be executed that means if a continue statement is encountered then the control will directly shift to the beginning of the loop that is again the test expression of the loop will be tested okay and if there is no continue statement encountered then obviously the remaining part of the loop will be executed now see in both the cases the remaining part of the loop is jumped but in case of break what happens is the remaining part of the body is jumped in such a manner that the loop in the, that the entire loop is actually terminated once the break statement is encountered nothing after that will be executed in the loop but that is not so in the case of continue in case of continue it will be done only once that the remaining body will be skipped if the <coughs> uh, if this part is skipped then the control will shift to the beginning of the loop unlike in break okay now let us take a look at code over here we will uh, we have written already the format since formality stuff now what i do is uh, let's close the remaining tabs so uh, what i write is uh, say suppose okay int i is equal to zero okay. mm, let's make a loop for int okay for i uh, actually we don't even need this initialization but even if you do that it's not a problem for i is equal to zero i less than 10 just to keep things simple i'm giving you a very basic example so that you can you know easily understand how the code works so uh, say if i is equal to 5 then uh, okay let's do this printf break encountered okay after this printf i will write break <coughs> so you must be able to understand that if the value of i inside this loop becomes 5 then this statement will get printed and then a break okay that means the loop will be terminated over here so uh, just to understand the difference let's say printf percentage d okay. uh, 
इनसाइड दैट आई गिवन प्रिंट स्टेटमेंट इफ फाइव दैट मीन्स इफ द वैल्यू ऑफ आई टर्न आउट टू बी फाइव देन दिस स्टेटमेंट विल बी एग्जीक्यूट और दिस स्टेटमेंट विल बी प्रिंटेड एंड देन द ब्रेक so let us comp uh, compile this code and uh, if there is no error let's see okay let's run the code so see 0 1 2 3 4 and then it shows break encountered so as soon as the break statement was encountered the loop got terminated okay Now to make things even clear uh say print if in the loop or let's say still in the loop now what we can do is print a slash in here and here as well okay what happened yeah my bit not try right. Zero still in the loop. One still in the loop. Two still in the loop. Three still in the loop. Four still in the loop. And then we have this five. So when the five, see the five was printed over here. That's fine. But as soon as that five was encountered, see this condition becomes true. As soon as this becomes true, the control jumps inside the if statement to print break encountered. And that is the reason why. once this is printed we did not get this one in the output why because as soon as this was printed immediately next to it there was a break statement and this break statement completely terminated this loop and that is why this part did not actually get printed now let us show you the illustration of continue we'll use a very similar example just that i'll replace Break with continue. Say so continue encountered. Here also continue encountered. Okay. This is a very similar example. There will be a only small difference, and let us note that. So let's build it. Okay. What happened? Print f. Okay. This one. See. Still in the loop. Okay, break encountered. Now over here, you notice this part. Zero. Still in the loop. Until four, we have the same thing getting printed. That is still in the loop. Now as soon as five was encountered, we have this print statement. That is continue encountered. See, it shows you continue encountered. So once this continue was encountered, the control of the loop shifted immediately to the beginning. That means. this part was not printed see over here for number 5 this part is this still in the loop is not printed okay but immediately after 5 when 6 is there again the same thing continues to print that is first there is the number and then still in the loop again a number then still in the loop so that way it continues until the value of i is less than 10 that is 9 Okay, so this was the difference between a break statement and a go to state uh, and a continue statement. And now I will show you how to use go to. So in order to do that, let us simply just comment this entire thing out. And again, I'll do the same thing. Control C. P. Over here, I will write go to A. And What is a? A is this. Let's see what happens. This will. Okay, just a minute. Well, let us not write it over here. That will probably give me an infinite loop. Instead, what I'll do? If i is equal to equal to five, go to. Okay, let's take the control to this part. Let's write. P R I print F. 
jump over the loop okay so whenever that go to or this label will be encountered over here it will come here and it will print jumped over the loop let us compile the code and then run it see 0 1 2 3 4 as soon as 5 was encountered it printed jumped over the loop that means this statement basically did the <coughs> this basically did the same task as was done by break statement but even then this is not you know this is not a very good option to use that you will realize when you will write larger pieces of program and as you practice you will come to understand why this is not a very handy thing to use because see it does not serve any purpose anyway other than the fact that there are all arrows all over your program jumping from one place to another just because of the use of a go to statement because the same thing that you did over here can actually be achieved by using a break statement so it is really very pointless if you write something like this see if I write a break here then the same thing will happen I will write breaking over the loop in exactly the same thing will happen see let's close it and compile it um, okay we have a a over there actually that must be a problem let's run the code again yeah so 0 1 2 3 4 and then once 5 is encountered it breaks from the loop and prints breaking over the loop so it is basically doing the same thing so even if you don't use even even if you don't use a go to statement it makes no difference at all okay so that is why the use of go to statement is not needed at all so let's try the same thing here jumping over the loop okay so that is uh, that is about the jump statements now one more thing which I told you I'll show you is the use of break statement in case of switch see the switch that I'm talking about is very much very much analogous to the switches that you have in an electrical circuit at your house see what happens uh, let's take an input from the user say int choice okay now say scanf I won't write much I'll just take an input scanf ampus and num or what was it choice so I will take a choice from the user and according to his choice I'll do this <coughs> so over here I'm writing a switch which is a keyword again okay this choice is the handle or the or the you know the case variable that you'll write now if the value of choice is say 1 then print choice is 1 and here I will write a break what happens when you don't write a break that also I'll tell you but as of now let's do this okay mm. case 2 case 3 choices 2 and choices 3 now over here I'll write a default so printf wrong choice and then exit if the user enters the wrong choice then exit See, zero now uh, what is this code doing see the user is entering some value for this choice based upon the input that the user gives there are some cases if the user gives one that is case one then it will print choices one if case is two it will print choices two if it's three then choices three otherwise that means if the value of choice is anything other than one two or three then they will come in to rescue this default statement so this default statement will print wrong choice okay because this is not among the cases that the user gives 
okay now why did i use break over here so the reason why i used break over here is to avoid something called fall through what is a fall through is see fall t h r o u g h now what happens in a fall through is that if you do not write a break statement and if the choice value matches exactly with the first one or the second one and what will happen is if there is no break then all the statements after this matching case will get printed that means over here suppose the user enters one then and you do not give this break here then what will happen obviously this will be printed but after this everything else will also be printed so that is a uh, kind of a shortcoming that switch has to offer you but then it can be resolved if you use a break here so let's let's uh, you know compile the code and see if it's working okay std lib.h we must include std lib.h over here std lib let's save the code and now run it see it's waiting for my input say i give one okay so it gives me choice is one now suppose i give a five it says wrong choice so it is basically acting to you acting like a switch over here that means if you in case of your home circuitry also if you press the uh, switch for a light then obviously your fan will not start to work if you press the switch of your laptop or rather if you press the switch of your uh, whatever computer then obviously your computer will turn on and not anything else so that is how switch case works okay now if you do not give this break say suppose i am not writing this break let's remove it over here here also and what will happen you see if the user enters one if the user happens to enter one then the first one second one and the third one all are getting executed why because see there is no break here that means this is matched this is also matched and after this also we have not included any break so this one is also matched so that is a shortcoming and hence we write a break here and what is the use of this default the default signifies those situations where if user enters a wrong value then there must be something that is done okay over here maybe you could also notify the user to enter a correct value otherwise over here what i have done is i have simply exited from the program just to keep things simple so that is the that is another use that break has to offer you okay so that is uh, more or less everything about break statement continue statement and go to statement and i have also showed you a illustration for switch case so that's all for this video thank you very much